Today we're talking hand guards, and did you know that there's only two types to choose from and really only two jobs that they're designed for? Still though, picking the right one for your next build or upgrade might be the toughest choice that you'll have to make for your AR-15. Let's talk about why. Hey guys, Randy from AT3Tactical.com here today with episode number five of our AR-15 Beginner's Guide, Hand Guards, where saving your fingers and mounting your stuff is what they're all about. Still, with only two handguard types to choose from, drop-in or free float, why would picking out a handguard for your AR be such a tough decision to make? Well, actually, the answer is less about choosing for optimized functionality and actually more about just choosing options. Drop-in, free float, colors, lengths, mounting systems, M-Lock, Picatinny, key mod, quad rails, aluminum, carbon fiber. I mean, the list goes on and on. So let's start with the easy stuff and talk about the difference between those two types of hand guards, drop-in and free float. So one of the first discussions that you'll likely run across between drop-in and free float hand guards revolves around this topic of barrel oscillation and harmonics. Without getting way too in-depth in this episode, barrel oscillation is the natural flex or bending of your barrel immediately after squeezing off a round. You'll hear both sides of the argument if you look around. One, that free floating is best to preserve precision, or two, that it really doesn't matter to everyone, which is kind of where I tend to land. For most average shooters, we can probably just skip the debate altogether, but it is this conversation around the harmonics that actually gives us those two types of handguards today, the drop-in or fixed, and the free float. So from the dawn of the M16, we were first introduced to drop-in or fixed handguards, which gets its name a couple different ways. One, they just drop into place when you install them, typically the top half first, then the bottom. And secondly, they're affixed to the barrel via pinch points between the large A-frame's front sight post and the springy delta ring barrel nut assembly. What that means is that most of the natural barrel movements after shooting are actually transferred and absorbed into the rest of the AR through these points of contact on the barrel and hence the name fixed. Opposite of that, you have free floated handguards. These handguards have basically little to no interaction directly with the barrel since they are most commonly secured in place around the barrel nut itself leaving the barrel to float freely inside the handguard. So if barrel harmonics and oscillation is not a major decision factor for your average shooter, then what does one handguard have over the other? Well, actually, they both serve the main two purposes of handguards, one to protect your fingers and two to mount your crap. But beyond that, the drop-in handguard might actually speak to you because of the price, since most drop-in handguards today are typically lower cost than the average free-floated handguard. Granted, that gap is closing pretty quickly with more and more brands like AT3 making free float options. The availability might also be another factor for drop-in over free floated, especially for looking at those off-the-shelf range-ready AR-15s. As it stands today, you'll probably see more AR-15s with drop-in handguards at your local gun store, but again, times are changing here as well. Personally, I feel the drop-in style is better for serviceability and ease of installation. Not only does it take me zero tools in about 10 seconds to remove these handguards, but because they are so simple, I could take multiple options to the range if I wanted to and just swap them out. Lastly, you have that nostalgia piece for drop-in handguards, which I'm sure my fellow vets have a special soft spot for like I do. Uh, struggling with that delta ring brings back a lot of memories, but today I'll admit my heart actually belongs to free float. Okay, so why free float? Well, look at this thing, it's just sexy. And better yet, there's just far more free float handguard options out there in different designs and styles and mods and lengths and choices of mounting options and accessory options. Uh, rather than being confined to only the distance between my fixed front sight post and my delta ring, free floated handguards offer me a whole larger world of customization options. Like I mentioned, they are getting cheaper, they are getting lighter, and all sorts of cool factor options, but at the end of the day, they're just handguards. So whether it's free float or drop-in, they still have those two jobs, and they both do them very well. Real quick on that topic of heat, this is another factor that we can put to rest for today's average shooter. Nearly every handguard option on the market today will offer you ample heat protection 
for light to medium rates of fire, basically like a few hour range day where you're not mag dumping mag after mag after mag. That said, just a pair of shooting gloves or some smartly installed grip accessories can add to your heat protection if you're really worried about it, rather than beating your head against the wall trying to find that perfect handguard that does it all. So between drop-in and free float, there's not really a performance-based decision and also not really a heat-related decision, so what are we left with? Now the answer is mounting options, which will be the bulk of today's episode, the places to mount your sweet accessories. We're talking Picatinny, M-Lock, and Key Mod. These are the three main attachment options that you'll see on both drop-in and free float handguards, but it all really started with the pick rail. Here's your two cent history lesson for today. Originally dubbed the Weaver Rail, in the 90s, Picatinny Arsenal was charged with creating a military standard rail system for the US Army that was later adopted to NATO forces as well. This is often why you hear pick rails are referred to as mill standard 1913 or 1913 rails for short. The reason for that standard, no matter what weapon you're issued or maybe even picked up on the battlefield, that mounting system across the board will be the same even where you put the exact spot of your accessories thanks to standardized T marks or measurement markings that you often see on top of pick rails as well. So how do Picatinny rails work? This one's pretty easy. Just line up your accessory or optic onto one of the many T-slots or grooves in the top and then torque it down. That two 45 degree angles on either side of the Picatinny dovetail cross or counter torque against each other so that your device is nearly impossible to fall off. That Picatinny locking design is so reliable that many tout the pick rail today still as one of the most secure attachment methods out there, so much so that almost all of your upper receivers on the market utilize a Picatinny rail across the top for mission critical accessories like optics. And as that Picatinny standard increased in popularity, we got the quad rail handguard design, which is basically pick rails on the 12, 3, 6, and 9 o'clock position uh, to allow the same semi-permanent mounting reliability to other accessories like your bipods, your lights, or your foregrips. Although quad rails are waning in popularity for the lighter, more ergonomic type M-lock styles, they are still out there for both drop-in and for free float. So are quad rails for you? Well, maybe they tickle that nostalgic feeling for you, but the grip and the weight will probably be the biggest decision factor for choosing one of these. Quad rails are heavier on average, almost always fatter with a wider grip, but both of those could be a benefit to some shooters, especially those with big old man bear hands to grip around this thing, but nonetheless, heavier and bulkier. So from the pick rails of the AR-15 world in the 90s, eventually some newer designs would begin popping up like Magpul's modular lock or M-lock design from the mid 2000s. Today, M-lock is everywhere. So much so, it's become a household name like Kleenex to tissue or Velcro to hook and pile tape, meaning that all sorts of manufacturers outside of Magpul are making industry standard M-lock fittings and accessories. So how does M-Lock work? It's a little more complicated than the Picatinny rail, but still pretty simple. Line up your accessory onto the M-Lock slots, screw the T-nut and cam until it's locked in, and that's it. As you tighten the cam and T-nut, two of the four rounded edges only allows it to travel 90 degrees when tightening, so you're not just sitting there spinning your wheels. The real question is why is M-Lock so dang popular these days? I'd say one reason, Probably because there's so many options out there for manufacturers, not just the handguard design itself, but available accessories and accessory mounting options. The best part is since the M-Lock attachment points are standardized to a 7mm by 32mm, any gear with that M-L-O-K symbol on it will fit guaranteed. I also have to say that sexy appeal is another point of popularity with the M-Lock design. Since Magpul didn't lock it up in proprietary, the sky has been the limit for all sorts of different manufacturers to put their creative stamp on the design, and man, there are some sexy ones out there. However, for me, the real reason I'd choose M-Lock over quad rail or Picatinny is weight. Just visually, you can see there's less material on the M-Lock versus the quad rail, and less material inherently means less weight. 
For example, I have two 15 inch handguards here. The AT3 Pro Quad Rail comes in at about 19.6 ounces, while the AT3 Spear M Lock winds up at about 11.9 ounces. That's a 7.7 .7 ounce difference or 35% less weight from one over the other. Granted, the more accessories and gear you kit your AR-15 out with, the more you consider weight, but you can start shaving off some ounces early just by your choice of handguard. Speaking of accessories, we've got complete accessory dominated episodes down the road in this series, but to the point of grip, like I mentioned with the quad rail, less material around the M lock also means a skinnier grip. For some, that naked M lock might be too skinny, but again, there's plenty of M lock grip accessories that bulk up your grip or give you more grip traction. I will say that two of the most common questions that we get around here is what size of handguard do I need? And how do I swap out my drop-in handguard for a free float down the road? To answer that first question, it's almost always short enough to not cover your muzzle device, but long enough to cover your gas block. Often you'll see handguards in seven, nine, and 12 inches to cover a majority of the barrel lengths out there, but you'll likely fall somewhere between that 12 inch and 15 inch handguard length. As for swapping out your drop-in for a free float option, We'll definitely have to have a video on that down the road, but my answer today is just start with a new barrel and start fresh. Another common question that we get about hand guards is how does it fit with your existing upper receiver? Is your upper receiver billeted, forged? Does it have forward assist or not forward assist? Because all of those things actually don't matter to handguard fitment, but they do matter in next week's episode right over here. It's all about uppers, so take a look.